This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with Bethlehem Lutheran Church on this 15th day of September. A welcome to all of you who are joining us here online. A few announcements before we begin our worship service together. First is, we have church directory pictures coming up this October 15th and 16th, and then maybe other days if we need them, we will be taking church directory pictures. Every family who comes in to have their picture taken receives a free 8x10 uh, picture, as well as a free directory when they come in. So please, um, you'll, there'll be more information coming out to you as well in mailed form, but we will have, there's a website to sign up on, or if you would like to call into the office to reserve a time as well, please do that. We look forward to getting a new directory. We are definitely due for it. And so thank you for being a part of it. Then, today is our kickoff for the story. We'll be doing a bit of an introduction to what this is for us in the message today. If you would still like to receive one of the story Bibles to follow along with, please reach out to me in the office. I would gladly, gladly order you one or give you instructions of how to get one yourself. But we are excited to finally begin this 31-week series. Lastly, our owls, our older, wiser Lutherans, will be meeting on September 24th, which is a Tuesday, at 2 p.m. for bingo. So if you have a last name that starts with A through M, you are to bring prizes. And if you have a last name starting with N through Z, you are to provide desserts. So we look forward to having you there for another rousing bingo game. Let us then take a moment to center our hearts and minds together for worship today. We gather together for worship in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in this time of confession and forgiveness. Let us pray. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings that war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so, beloveds, hear this good news. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Please join me in our prayer of the day. God who is present in our stories, your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. As we begin this journey through the stories of your beloved children shared with us in the scriptures, let our eyes be opened as well to your story, a story of goodness, grace, and love for all of your creation. In the name of your Son, whose story is ours of salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so our scripture today comes to us from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. This is taken from what we call the Sermon on the Mount and is found not too far after the Beatitudes. Jesus said, 
Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I am not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be with each of you from God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many of you are probably familiar with the famous Michelangelo painting of the hand of God reaching out to the hand of Adam. This image of the divine spark, that moment where God set into motion God's connection with humankind happens here. And then from that, the infinitely faceted image of God in the world shows through humankind that came from it. This is the story that begins all other stories. But this was not the only story of God's connection to humans that Michelangelo painted. If you look wider than these two fingertips, you will see that God's story is much more vast, spanning the entire ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, with these fingers in the middle. Creation is at the center, but it is also joined by the fall of Eden, the story of the flood and Noah's righteousness in the building of the ark, and drunkenness in his landing of the prophets who foretold the coming of Christ in the years to follow, and images of the 40 descendants, the generations leading to Jesus, whose stories each individually span the entirety of what we call the Old Testament. Each of them experienced a life full of goodness and sin, joy and heartbreak, lives that looked much like our own. Each story is unique and individual, and yet can be woven together in this dramatic epic of God's story, a singular artwork representing our need of salvation as offered by God through Jesus. In our text today, Jesus is proclaiming this truth. In fulfilling the law and the prophets of what we would call the Old Testament, all these individual stories, God and Jesus is putting these pieces together, showing the full story and its purpose through Jesus' life. Everything that came before Jesus was not separate from him or his mission, nor has it been thrown out now that Jesus has come to bring salvation and grace. All of it, this story and its arc, has been pointing to him. All the individual stories have been woven together to give this larger image of God three in one and one in three who has been with us from the beginning. Jesus' life and teaching, then, not only shows how they all fit but also what God's hope for God's story through humanity has been since the beginning. Jesus is living out God's hope for God's story. To love God, to love our neighbor, to share in this beautiful creation as co-creators and caretakers. As we go through the Story Bible this year, You will see how these two types of stories move alongside each other. There is the lower story, which reveals the here and now of daily life, those individual stories of experiences as people living in God's world. In the lower story, we make money, pay bills, get sick, get tired, deal with breakups, and work through conflicts. These are the things we care about in our specific lives as people of faith. And we trust that God meets us here in our story. We will read the stories of others who have followed God and will find wisdom and solidarity in God's presence in their stories as well. God meets us here in the lower story. 
God's presence is palpable in these narratives. But also, God has a higher agenda. There is an upper story as well that looks far beyond the daily grind of this world and focuses on a grander story of something larger and more eternal. As we read the Bible through this lens, as we take a 10,000 foot view of our own story, we see how each smaller piece fits into this larger mural of goodness, grace, and peace. Not just for us in our story, but for all of creation throughout history. Just like the individual stories of the Bible come together so that they can create this grander story of God's work in the world, so do our stories continue that as well. God's ark does not end at the end of the stories told in our Bible. The tapestry is continuing to be woven. Through experiencing the stories of ordinary people in all of their righteousness and sin, we can see the ways that our story fits in as well. The Bible is a beautiful work of literature a wonderful library of experiences of people and God that tells the story of God and God's world through the lens of those that lived 2,000 or more years ago. It is an invitation to see how God used regular people like Abraham and Joseph and Miriam and Moses and Ruth and Deborah and Jael and Esther, of Saul and Elijah and Elisha, and know that God's story is also our story. God's story is still being told through your story and mine. This year then let us dig deeper into how God has worked through the people of the ancient Middle East so that we may see how God is at work in this time and place as well. I would like to share with you a brief video kicking off then our time together in the Story Bible. May peace be with you all. Amen. This is your story. This is your story. This is your story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. But most of all, this is the greatest story ever told. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I know you're going to enjoy the incredible journey you're about to embark on. The story is brimming over with tales of mystery, intrigue, adventure, of love, heartbreak, and triumph, of power, of struggle, and finally, of redemption. But remember, the Bible is not a hundred ancient, unrelated paintings, but a mural all knitted together to tell the story of God's great love for us and the extent to which He will go to get us back. The great thing about this curriculum is that it was designed to encourage everyone in your church to participate, from the congregation to the small group and individual families to go through the story group experience together. The story will change your life into a reflection of God's plan, God's story. I know you're really going to enjoy and appreciate this wonderful experience as you fully explore how we all fit into the greatest story ever told, God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our worship service confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so as people of faith who believe in the power of prayer, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Please join me. Good and loving God, we pray today for the church in this world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray today for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. God, we also remember, as 9-11 comes by yet again, the men and women who died 23 years ago in the terrorist attacks on our country. We remember those service people who went across the sea to fight and defend our freedom. And we also acknowledge the pain left behind. God, continue to do your work through nations that are in war. Continue your presence and your wisdom and your humility in their leadership. Continue to walk alongside and be present with the people of Gaza and Palestine and Israel, with those in Ukraine and Russia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. We pray especially today for Lori Asmus, Ruth Asmus, Robin Borgen, Marvin Clemenson, Ruth Ellenson, Marie Fjellsted, Kristen Kelly, Kathy Cullink, Florence Mock, Alan Oak, Gloria Adam, Margaret Sandsmark, Jim Wilkie, Maria Winters, and friends and family of our community, Ralph Bartholomew, Charlotte Baumgartner, Jean Bolio, Peg Broughton, Lorraine Flesness, Marge Getz, Kara Jacobson, Alan Knopp, Merle Matheson, Star Moss, Alan Pritchard, Kim Renner, Janice Shep, Bette Seward, Jeff Schoberg, Josh Slind, Bob Walls, Monica Webster, and these we lift up from our own hearts in this time of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equality and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we entrust these and all our prayers to you, in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive then this benediction. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed rest of your day, and we will see you next week as we begin chapter one of the story. Peace be with you.